Welcome to our webinar training on mechatronics and industrial automation. Mechatronics is a multidisciplinary field that combines elements of mechanical engineering, electronics, computer science, and control engineering. It makes intelligent systems and products. The term mechatronics is a blend of mechanics and electronics, highlighting the integration of mechanical components with electronic and computational systems. With technology advancements, the integration of these fields of engineering are generating simpler and economical design solutions. Mechatronics is a rapidly growing field. The word mechatronics originated in the 1970s by a senior engineer in Japan at Yaskawa named Tsutsuro Mori, who recognized the necessity for a field integrating mechanical, electrical, and software engineering. In this mechatronics and industrial automation training, we'll be exploring mechatronics, data acquisition, signal conditioners, smart automation, and mechatronics applications. We'll also give a demonstration of easy data logger, control and monitoring software in a mechatronics application. Please enter in your question or comments and we'll answer them. If you're working on any applications you want to go over, please let us know. We provide industrial control products and data acquisition system solutions. We manufacture our products in Taiwan. ICP-DAS was established in 1993. ICP-DAS USA was established in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. We have over 100 R&D engineers that we work closely with to support you. We have a knowledgeable team. We help with application engineering. We also provide free technical support. We carry a large inventory and we ship out out-of-stock items within about one week. I'm Maria Santella and I'm our sales manager. I've been with ICP Desk USA for 12 years. I have Robert Morrell, our senior technical application engineer here with me. He's been with the company 11 years. Mechatronics involves computer science the study of computers, computing, hardware, software, and uses for processing information. It involves software and algorithm development for solving problems. Computer science applies mathematics, engineering, and logic for implementing functions. Mechatronic systems rely on software to control their behavior based on process sensor data to make decisions. In mechatronics, computer scientists use data science, robotics, and software programming to create, control, or improve systems. Mechatronics includes physical structures, materials, mechanisms, force, and movements. It involves the relationship between force, matter, and motion of physical things. Mechanical engineers design, develop, build, and test physical components of systems. They design the physical body of a machinery, robots, or precision manufacturing equipment. Electronics are a branch of science involving the study of control and flow of electricity. Electronic devices control the flow of electronics to perform tasks like the data logging of temperature, broadcasting out of communication, the cooling of air, and the playing of music. Electronic engineers design, manage, and test electronic components, software, and equipment. Measurements in mechatronic systems involve the gathering of data like temperature, pressure, and motion through sensors that provide information about a system's state. Software and equipment like actuators are often used to make adjustments based on measurement data. Control engineers develop algorithms and software to ensure systems operate as intended with stability, accuracy, and reliability. Software designed through computer science concepts and given physical, mechanical, and environmental elements allow for the design of industrial automation systems involving electronics that take measurements for manufacturing, control, and production systems. Data acquisition, it's the gathering of physical information like flow rate, temperature, pressure, or pH data, and the conversion of those signals into information that computers and controllers can understand. 
the AT7026 Modbus TCP-based analog and digital I.O. module gathers the information through sensors connected to the terminal block connector. The data is passed over Modbus TCP through Ethernet cabling to a computer running Windows operating system and a ladder logic and C language touchscreen controller. Data acquisition brings in the sensor data from the environment back to the software running in the mechatronic system for implementing actions and decisions. Analog signals like flow rate, temperature, and pressure are variable over time. Digital signals are either on or off like a machine or a light switch that might be on or off like a one or zero, true or false. A dimmable light switch is analog and the intensity of the light can vary. A data acquisition system consists of many integrated components that sense physical measurement variables, condition the electrical signal to make it readable by an AD board, convert the signal into a digital format that can be read by a computer, and process, analyze, store, and display the acquired data with software. Data acquisition equipment communicates over different protocols and interfaces. Modbus is a commonly used protocol. Modbus RTU communicates over RS-485 cabling, which is two twisted insulated copper wires. Modbus TCP communicates over Ethernet cabling. On the left, you can see a Modbus master broadcasts out messages to the data acquisition devices. The broadcasted messages contain a unique address identifier for the intended recipient. Only the intended recipient with the unique address will reply with the requested information. Data is stored in memory registers, usually indicated with a Modbus register mapping table. Modbus RTU data acquisition devices are connected in daisy chain fashion, similar to connecting daisy flowers together by twisting their stems together. You can see the twisted insulated copper wires in this picture between the PDS-720 serial device servers and the M7000 modules and the power meter data acquisition equipment. This picture illustrates the acquiring of analog input information like power, the status of a physical switch being switched on or off. Uh, you can see M7055 that's used to turn on digital outputs that trigger alarms based on conditions. The M7022 turns on analog outputs that turns on cooling fans. The WISE5800 is a controller configurable over a web page and implements if-then control logic. In this mechatronics process control and monitoring application, the switch is used to turn on the chemical processing equipment. If the power measurement is beyond a set level, the cooling fans turn on. If the power me measurement is it reaches an unsafe level, the alarm sounds. And if someone turns the switch off, then the alarms turn off. The monitoring center allows you to see the status of the system through a web browser on a screen which pulls up the web server in the WISE 5800. The PDS-720 is connected to WISE 5800 over RS-485, and it's connected to the NS-208 Ethernet switch over Ethernet cabling. The NS-208 Ethernet switch is connected to the PDS-720 serial to Ethernet device server over Ethernet cabling. In addition to the wired type of data acquisition equipment, there are also wireless options like our Zigbee ZT2000 series communicates over Modbus RTU. Zigbee is an intelligent self-organizing mesh network. It supports line of sight communication up to 700 meters or 2,296 feet. Each endpoint is a repeater. So whether it's an IO module, or a host converter or a slave converter or an IO module, it acts as a repeater. If there's any obstruction in the communication path, the host coordinator, which would be connected to your controller or your computer, um, the host coordinator would reroute the communication around the obstruction since each end device is a repeater. 
Wi-Fi data acquisition modules like our WF2000 series communicate over Modbus TCP, and they can be used with new or existing Wi-Fi networks. They communicate up to 50 meters or 126 feet, which can be extended with Wi-Fi access points, just like in your homes. Um, so we have a large selection of data acquisition modules. We have remote IO and also rack-based solutions. We support many different kinds of protocols. We have equipment that supports many different kinds of protocols, including BACnet, CanOpen, DECON, DeviceNet, EtherCAT, Ethernet IP, both Modbus RTU and Modbus TCP, MQTT, OPCUA, which comes with some software for implementing control and monitoring. So those are those are pretty interesting. Also the Profinet, USB, Wi-Fi, and, and the Zigbee that I mentioned. Our Easy Data Logger is a free Windows-based data logging, data acquisition, control, and monitoring software. It's being used in Mechatronics applications and allows you to log data from Modbus devices based on configurable time intervals. Um, you can log every second for a year, for example, and store that in one file and then have the system start a new file after that. It supports control logic, so you can configure it to trigger outputs based on input data, like the turning on of a fan based on a temperature level. You can also set up input fields, so you can set the analog output and digital output values. You can set them to open or close valves or to turn equipment on or off. Equipment, um, you can use this with all sorts of different kinds of equipment that can communicate over Modbus, or you can use the signals that come from the data acquisition modules, like the 4 to 20 milliamps or the relay outputs, for example. Easy Data Logger stores data in a database, which can be exported for viewing in a spreadsheet. You can use Easy Data Logger with other vendors' Modbus devices, as long as one icp dash Modbus device is in your network. The, our modules work as a key. The free version of Easy Data Logger supports up to 64 IO tags, and an advanced version works for up to 1,024 tags. And if you'd like a one-on-one -on -one web meeting where we help show you how to implement your application with Easy Data Logger, please contact us and, and we'll set that up for you. Signal conditioners convert one type of electronic signal into another type of signal. They're also used to improve or split signals. We offer different types. Some of them take thermocouple temperature measurements and then convert those into current or voltage. Some of them take in temperature RTD and then turn that into a corresponding voltage. We also have triaxial voltage input and output modules for vibration monitoring. We have DC to DC power modules with 3000 VDC isolation protection. We also have surge protector modules. Uh, those have been used uh, sometimes protecting equipment, for example, like in lightning strikes. We also have RS-485 pull high, pull low termination resistor modules that help improve the RS-485 signal. This is the SG-3383. It takes in a current input 4 to 20 milliamp signal, and then it puts out three different 4 to 20 milliamp signals based on that input data. So you can implement your application. Um, it is very convenient because then you can take in those three signals. If it's all based on this one 4 to 20 milliamp signal, um, it really streamlines your application and there's 3000 VDC isolation for the input power and the output. There's an LED indicator, which is great because it shows you whether the system's, if, whether it's working or not in power or communication. 
these are powered, uh, most of our products are powered 10 to 30 VDC. Most of them are all DIN rail mountable and they support the negative 25C to 75C operating temperature. Our RS-485 termination resistor modules, they help pull the RS-485 signal high or low. Different manufacturers um, have different RS-485 products, and for the most part, they all can communicate with each other, but this particular product is going to help um, improve that signal if you should have any kind of communication issue. We also have I-7510, which repeats the signal, which would make your RF-485 communication stronger um, and also communicate farther. Um, so like a RS-485 communication supports communication distances up to 4,000 feet. So you can extend that communication with a repeater like I-7510. Smart automation allows for implementing control and monitoring applications without programming. You just set up the conditions you want through a web page, so you can set up the turning on of a light at a certain time or the turning on of an air conditioner based on temperature measurements. Um, the, men the example I just mentioned, um, some air conditioners communicate over infrared, for example, and we have infrared to Modbus gateways. So you'd be able to use this since it supports uh, support. The one on the screen here is WISE 5800 and it supports Modbus. So with that gateway, it allow you to communicate with your infrared air conditioner. Um, our WISE 5800 series smart automation controllers are configurable through a web page and they're being used for monitoring and control in mechatronics applications. Y stands for Web Inside Smart Engine, and it supports Modbus TCP communication. It triggers outputs based on inputs, sends email alarms based on schedules or conditions. It shows the system status through a web page. They integrate easily with IO modules and sensors on the field side, support various IoT protocols, and integrate easily with SCADA systems. They allow for real-time IO logic control, and they also log data. So because the web page supports if-then-else control programming logic, so there's no need for any coding, compiling programs, exporting the programs, and then loading them into your controllers. You just make the changes to your application through the web page, which helps keep you up and running. Our WISE 5800 series are being used in smart automation environmental monitoring applications. The I-7000 series data acquisition modules are used to log measurement levels of hazardous chemicals and wastewater runoff from manufacturing facilities. The data is logged on a micro SD card in the WISE 5800, then an email gets sent out based on a schedule with the data log. The data log is also retrievable over FTP. When the level of chemicals starts to get close to an unsafe level, email alerts get sent out, so the manufacturing at the plant will stop and maintenance will be performed to prevent hazardous conditions. In greenhouse automation systems, WISE 5800 is used with I-7000 modules like the I-7019R that takes temperature measurements, and then it's also used with turning equipment on based on the temperature measurements. So you can have, it allows for optimal uh, agriculture applications. In this application, you can see there's Indisoft SCADA software monitoring and controlling the building. There's different C language programmable controllers installed on different floors in the building. The UPAC 7186EG, uh, that one actually is programmed with Isograph, which is an IEC 61131 3 programmable language supporting instruction list, 
uh, flow chart, ladder logic. Um, and then you can see these are connected to different touchscreen controllers, the TPD280U over RS485. ICP DAS developed its own high speed IO, and these are called FRNet modules, and these are connected to the UPAC 7186EG for control and monitoring on the different floors in the building. The touchscreen controllers, those are programmable with free HMI works that we provide. It's a IDE development environment, kind of a drag and drop type environment where you can drag buttons and labels and, and other widgets on the screen for monitoring and control. And then you can double click items, insert some scripts or uh, it supported supports C language and then and letter logic. And so then after you make your application and then you load it to the controller and it's pretty fast and easy. So another Mechatronics application is environmental monitoring and energy management. So uh, I mentioned Indu Soft SCADA software. Uh, we also have Aviva SCADA software and those that comes with many different kinds of communication drivers. This one's using the Modbus TCP driver, which communicates out to GTM 401M 4GE over the cellular network. And it allows for the PC to broadcast out SMS messages based on the conditions of the application. And this MDC 714 Modbus data concentrator is connected over ethernet to the Windows-based computer running Aviva SCADA software. And then over the RS-485 bus, the Modbus data concentrator is connected to different equipment. The uh, DL-10, that's taking temperature measurements over Modbus RTU. And then there's also the ISN-104 leak detection module and the cable. And um, those sense if there's a leak and they the sense liquid, and then it passes the data back to the Modbus data concentrator, which collects all the Modbus data in one place. So instead of having the SCADA system go pull each device, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the broadcasting out of the message to all the equipment, and then just the intended device answering, um, with this one, you just have to pull the MDC 514, and that one's just going to send the message back, uh, helping to streamline the application. And then there's the M7051D, um, detecting whether the cabinet door is open or closed. There's also a PLC controlling a cool water chiller and also um, the different elements in the system implementing control based on the conditions and uh, sending alerts and information as necessary. And then that, that power meter is taking the power measurement from a cooling system. And when the power is over a certain level, it helps to indicate when the machine needs maintenance. So in this mechatronics and industrial automation training, we discussed mechatronics, data acquisition, signal conditioners, smart automation and mechatronics applications. If you're working on anything we can help with, please comment, call, or send an email. We also have live chat on our website. Now I'm gonna pass it to Robert Morrell, who will be giving a live demonstration of easy data logger control and monitoring software in a mechatronics application. Okay, can you all hear me okay? Yes. I wanna make sure I unmuted my microphone. Let's see, okay, let me start screen sharing. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, when I first uh, think of mechatronics, the main concept I think people talk about is robotics. But our products uh, work in conjunction with robotics and uh, we provide the inputs, outputs and controls for 
um, motion control. In this uh, little tiny picture here, you can see we have motion control modules, but we offer a whole lot more that can be used with uh, motion control. Uh, with your robotics, you have uh, encoders, servo motors, and the motion is coordinated usually with a motion controller. But uh, in conjunction with those, you have the manufacturing aspect of it. Conveyor belts, on-off control, um, motion control, conveyor control, uh, grippers. So our Modbus TCP uh, modules like our ET7255 can be used in conjunction with the motion control modules where we can, uh, what do you call it, sense an object is there, uh, turn on a gripper, uh, coordinate motion, uh, you know, uh, stop processes if necessary. Uh, when you use robotics, you can, use uh, our Modbus TCP data acquisition modules for both uh, controlling the robotics and turning on and off. But you can also use our ET7255 or other data acquisition modules for monitoring the manufacturing environment. Uh, the control aspect involves a lot of on-off buttons, uh, indicator lights, alarms, uh, motion and um, what do you call it? volume control, like uh, level level detection, temperature monitoring and other aspects of robotics. But when you do transportation equipment, you can monitor uh, logistics as well and palletizing as part of uh, the robotic application as well. Servo controls and pneumatic controls along with PLC programming involves uh, acquiring data. The ET7255 has uh, what you call it, digital inputs and digital outputs, which can be uh, connected to most uh, PLCs, which communicate over a, a certain protocol. In this case, it's Modbus TCP. This module is all digital, but we also have analog modules like our ET7017. This one has analog voltage and current inputs and also a few digital outputs. But these are used in conjunction with mechatronics on the control side where uh, you use these to monitor the controls of the robotics and coordinate the application and eventually go to a control panel. Let's see, let me just quickly provide a quick schematic and some product details for the ET7017 and similar products. In this case, this one, this module accepts both current and voltage inputs as shown here in the type controls. These are the type of inputs. This module has, uh, let's see, the ability to sample up to 50 samples per second for analog inputs. Uh, we do have faster modules if you need it, but for traditional manufacturing, this is oftentimes fast enough. Uh, for the digital outputs, you can certainly uh, tie those in with visual indicators in your robotics applications. Uh, some of the Modbus register table as shown here, uh, simply just monitor the 30,000 registers or 3x registers for the analog input values, along with the digital inputs, digital outputs from other modules or other PLC sources within your application. Uh, when you uh, tie this all together, our IWS uh, touchscreen monitor can be used with this. Uh, Indusoft Web Studio is installed on this and you must purchase a, a, a development license. But once you create your application, you could create a visual uh, representation of your control panel, your application, and uh, just control and create logic with it to coordinate with uh, the motion control from the a mechatronics application that you develop. Uh, for now, I'm going to uh, quickly switch over to our easy data logger software. This easy data logger software, as Maria mentioned, requires at least one of our data acquisition modules to be uh, used with this. Then the free version accepts up to 64 IO tags, but you can also purchase a a uh, larger license with uh, 1,024 tags if you uh, want to expand this. Uh, later on in the uh, demonstration, I'll also sh quickly show Indusoft Web Studio, which can be used for more advanced 
controls automation and uh, mechatronics applications. Uh, let's see, with this uh, software, you can connect your data acquisition modules, which work in coordination with your mechatronics uh, motion controllers and uh, monitor for uh, pick and place applications and uh, manufacturing applications using the robotics aspect. And then you can uh, create a trend curve to monitor the application, like for instance, production equipment. Uh, you want to make sure that your product is uh, up and running and there's no uh, errors or alarm conditions happening. Uh, with the software, you can use the if then else logic to uh, trigger those alarms and uh, control the application. Let me quickly switch over to our layout screen. Our layout screen involves or gives you the ability to control as if it were a control panel from a PC. This software does run on a PC, but you can use it to uh, simply monitor and control your overall application. In this diagram, it just shows a conveyor belt, but uh, you can certainly uh, change the background picture and just place buttons and uh, monitors, or I'm sorry, buttons and gauges where you want to for your application. In this case up here, you just have a stop start button for uh, turning on and turning off the and conveyor controls. This just monitors the uh, conveyor belt, whether it's on or off and controlled by, of course, the PLC. Uh, this just monitors for, uh, uh, what do you call it, the availability of the product. So, you know, making sure that the uh, it's not jammed or empty. Uh, this overall is just another control button to indicate that, you know, something has been stopped manually. Uh, jam detection over here. Uh, over here shows the percentage of the hopper fill. And then over here just shows jam detection. Uh, visually. Uh, once you have these type of applications, you can coordinate coordinate these with the pick and place uh, robotics that are used for packaging and, and uh, automation. Uh, let's see then, let's see the other product I want to show you is our Indusoft Web Studio or actually Aviva Edge now. It's been rebranded. Aviva Edge is the new name for Indusoft Web Studio. Uh, for this one, not to be confused with Easy Data Logger, it's used for more advanced applications. Let me just show you the Viva Edge demo. This one, uh, as you can see, can be used for many different industries, including uh, robotics and mechatronics. But uh, you can visually create animations, use gauges, color changes, bar graphs, uh, position and transparency, which probably would be used very much in conjunction with uh, mechatronics. But you can use this to create your uh, representation of your application and just, uh, for instance, create a simple control panel that shows uh, or that controls your application. Or you can use something like our uh, food and beverage application where you can view the overall application. Uh, let's see, in a few minutes, we'll answer any questions you have, but I uh, just want to uh, show you these different demo screens. This just shows a processing, uh, let's see, what is this? Uh, the machinery, just uh, a press, press application. There we go. That's the idea that I was thinking of. Uh, the uh, oven and furnace application just shows on and off temperature control has a manual on and off process but these are just you know objects that you connect to for instance our et modules or other plcs that work in conjunction with uh, the mechatronics and control the application and monitor the application uh, one of the other features that are shown are the alarm screens uh, like here, for instance, if a uh, jam detection is detected, if a robot uh, stops running or uh, triggers a emergency stop situation, you can uh, have an indication here. Uh, you can also do reporting and trending uh, from within Aviva Edge as well. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, we'll answer them at this time. You could either type them in the chat box or uh, you can uh, raise your hand in the Zoom interface and we'll unmute the mic and allow you to ask those questions live. Let's see, any questions? 
so far, I don't see any questions. Uh, Maria pretty much covered a lot of our products, but uh, the idea of mechatronics is usually associated with robotics. Okay, I don't see any questions. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Maria? Um, no, but uh, if you're working on anything in the future, you can always, or if you have a question later, you can always contact us anytime and we'd be happy to help. Oh yeah, and let's see, whether it be Aviva Edge, uh, Easy Data Logger, or just some of our data acquisition modules or motion controllers, uh, we'll be happy to uh, help you in choosing those or show you a demonstration like Maria mentioned earlier. Oh, I guess one thing is about the pricing of the advanced Easy Data Logger or the Aviva SCADA software or the Indisoft SCADA software is it's a one-time purchase. There's a lot of software as a solution uh, type options out there, but these ones are, you just buy the license once and then and then it, it, it runs and then you own it. Um, there's also options for upgrading your license. So if you want to upgrade to a newer version of the software in the future, or you want to add tags, um, that is an option. But it is nice that there's that one-time purchase instead of uh, the monthly. OK, well, um, thanks for attending our, our webinar. and. Um, have a great day. Thank you.